Everybody, Brian here. It's Wednesday, the 26th of March. Let's look at this market. We did lose some ground down $1.34 in the S&P 500, and that was, of course, after a gap higher. That gap higher tried to stabilize above the uh, five-day moving average, which is actually declining, but it failed to hold. And after that, uh, we saw this market kind of unravel a little bit. I warned numerous times in the chat room uh, that things were looking uh, like it's uh, further selling coming, and I still believe that to be the case. Uh, we've, we've kind of really gone nowhere pretty much all this year so far uh, if you look at the percentage change and in particular in the last month or so we've seen kind of just a uh, what's looking more and more like distribution here the bigger level of potential support is 184 to 184 and a half but we now have a, a declining 5 10 and 20 day moving average at 20 day moving average is starting to flatten out here you can see and a pullback down into the uh, 50 day moving average really seems like it's likely here down near about 183.50 the actual number is 183.47, but it, it, it definitely looks like that should be the case. We did get maybe a little bit oversold here today, I and mean, you know perhaps we come down a little bit and then bounce and then uh, gets lower. But the fact is, we've got uh, you know stocks under distribution right now. We had 2,000 decliners, 999 advancers, so uh, the S&P 500 is looking a lot more vulnerable, similar to what we're seeing in the Nasdaq. We've been a lot more cautious about this Nasdaq because it's failed to hold above that 50-day moving average and we see on the 30-minute time frame that we've been stuck underneath the declining five-day moving average and that has given us reason to stay uh, on the sidelines or short if uh, that's you know and, and the point is when I mention these things that it looks like there's further selling coming people ask does that mean it's time to sell short we've been talking about short stocks for the last several weeks and we've had some really good ones in there as well um, so there's always a good opportunity to uh, to find something that, that's trending, whether it's up or down. Right now, I think that the uh, path of least resistance in the intermediate term is lower, and it pays to, to be looking for shorts. However, um, you know you can't do short at you know after these you know as it's making new lows for the week. Uh, in other words, I don't think that's a smart short because you have to look at it and say it just dropped from 89 straight down to 87 and a half, and we're also in the Nasdaq at this, uh, or getting close to uh, this prior important area, just under $87 a share. And of course, we have that 50-day moving average. So this is where we look, where, where it looks like we're heading. And um, of course, we can look at these Fibonacci levels that we've uh, re referenced previously and see that that's a, a two-thirds retracement as well that gets us to that 86 and a half-ish level. Let's take a look at the SPY uh, uh, Fib levels here. We can see that for the range this year, a 38.2% retracement will get us down just below Below that 50-day moving average to 183, and I think that's pretty likely here. So um, it doesn't mean that you can just get short and stay short, though, uh, because we have to have the the timing correct. Otherwise, you're going to have to take on much bigger risks uh, than than I think uh, most people should be comfortable with. The Russell 2000 has retraced more than 38.2% of its uh, yearly range, and the level that we've been focused on in here has broken. That's the uh, 116 level. We've been talking about 1. 16 here for the last uh, you know week and a half or so and we're, we're clearly below that we have a declining 5 10 and 20 day moving average and we have a market that's pulling back uh, it looks like it should be able to continue to pull back the 50 day moving average didn't uh, offer any support at all so perhaps it looks like to me 113.95 114 in this area this is where it looks to me like this market should be heading the 50 percent retracement as well as an area of prior support in resistance uh, for this market so it looks like another test of that area seems uh, pretty likely to me semiconductors did pull back in here and I think this market is getting a little bit tired we've seen of course that uh, they've had uh, you know this great uptrend rising 10 20 and 50 day moving average we're still looking uh, good in in that regard and the bigger level of support that needs to be broken to really turn things worse is this 4440 to 4450 band of support we have a uh, five day moving average it's rising, but it, uh, it looks like we're, you know, maybe starting to, to falter here a little bit. And back below 44.40 is really where the sellers, I think, gain control in the intermediate term. And uh, if, if that's to happen, 
that we get below there, then uh, a pullback a little bit deeper down, uh, under, you know, near 43 and a half seems likely. The financials, uh, we've been focused on the uh, 2225 level. And again, you know, people that will ask me intraday, and that's totally fine uh, to ask me intraday in the chat room, what do I think about the financials? The financials broke support. So I think that uh, they probably have some room to give back. They are still in a primary uptrend on the daily chart. Uh, we've got this longer term trend line that's being tested basically today as well and we can look at this and say you know the market has you know that this market has had a nice run the more times a uh, a trend line or a moving average in this case we're right at the 20-day moving average is tested the more likely it is that that uh, moving average will fail to hold or the support so maybe we get a little bit of a bounce and then we see this uh, support of 2225 to 2230 act as resistance break the trend line and head down towards 22 and if 22 failed to hold the bigger level of course is down here at about 2170 if we looked at Fibonacci of the uh, um, financials in here uh, to get uh, an idea of what normal retracements would be 2180 is a 38.2 percent retracement a 50 percent retracement would get us down towards the mid midpoint of this prior range at uh, 2160 so you have to be careful in this market we've we've really done a whole lot of what I think is churning uh, lately and we're not broken on the S&P 500 but we're breaking down uh, and there's a big difference there the, the thing is we're not broken so we're not in a bear market market by any measure but we have an intermediate term trend that looks like it's uh, time for a little bit further selling here so don't be in a hurry to buy these stocks we've seen a lot of high flyers pulling back I see people interested in buying them stay away from yesterday's winners while this market is pulling back let them stabilize you don't have to pick the bottom to make money if you can make you can make money by being late to uh, the turnaround and you won't have to experience all that uh, pain and if they don't turn around Around, then you, you, you don't uh, experience all that frustration as well. So time to be extra disciplined. Let go of those uh, bad habits uh, that you've that have that have uh, you know either been forgiven for basically over the last several years and play a strong strong defense.